Richard, what's on your mind? Well, I was listening to your podcast, uh, I guess maybe it was a couple of weeks ago, and it was a, a very good uh, summary. In fact, uh, your newsletter is going to come out uh, dealing with, uh, I guess, the subversion of truth, how we're being yes. silenced, and how things are being twisted. And I was, gosh, I, I walked away from that. So, I mean, that was like the worst halftime coaching thing I've felt. Uh -huh. We're going to lose this thing, you know? Uh, they've got everybody. They've got Google. They've got the uh, universities, the school. I, I even worked for Delta for 30 years, and I've seen that same thing walking by there, what, what you talked about. The posters. that That's in my new piece. that I just finished yes. writing. Amy's editing now. It'll be out September 1st, but I talk about that. It's actually worse because it's not just the posters on the, on the jetway, but it's also when you go down, you open up your, your monitor then and what they are promoting on the monitor in the movies. So, But you're right. This can be very, un, not only unsettling, but discouraging. Oh, yeah. And in fact, uh, I, I think I already... Um, you know, retired from them, but uh, also counseling, you know, uh, you know, whatever that too white thing, you know, you know, I, I, I can't see other people's perspective, you know, just really nonsense uh, yeah. that that uh, people are, are buying into. <clears throat> yes, and, I agree. And, and so, so my, my question was, you know, because you're very winsome and I, and, I, uh, and, and always upbeat and in, in time, I guess I almost take it as I think we're probably going to lose this battle, but you know we definitely win the war. Mm -hmm. And and what's what's the game plan look like in the meantime? I mean, there's going to be a lot of casualties. I mean, mm -hmm. two of my three grown children are woke or, or whatever. I mean, we we have to be very careful. Casualties of of how we we talk. Right, I, I yeah. speak with them, but you know I still try to throw some truth in there, just to mm -hmm. you know like. I put more in a pebble in there. I put a boulder in there. <laughs> of uh, course, you're you're a dad. God, God, dads are better at rocks than and uh, than pebbles. Okay, I know. I'm right. About... Uh, and, and so, I, I guess I wanted your take uh, because you see it even more so than, mm -hmm. than me. Uh, you know that, and, and surely, I mean, it, my faith is strong, and, and, and in many ways, it's much stronger. You know, I'm I'm reading through the Bible, uh, and in fact, I got that book that the Valley of Vision that you talked about. A, a right, year or right. So. Uh, I really love that too. And you know, just there, there is so much to undergird us uh, in, in this point, and and I think it is more effective if we aren't a sad sack or finger wagging. Mm -hmm. um, but. Yeah, well, I, let I me think... respond to it quickly, because I think I know okay. where you're going. We've got a pretty good picture, John and I both do. And before I pitch it over to John, I just want to make an observation. There is a certain sense in which all of this going on confirms the validity and truthfulness of my own worldview. Because what's yeah. going on is so ridiculously upside down. Yeah. It's so ridiculously upside down, where black is white and white is black and up is down and down is up and good is bad and bad is good, Right that right. the only person persons that can affirm what's going on are people that are completely blinded and this is exactly what scripture says the devil has done to the world and i developed that idea and in in the solid ground and john you and i were talking about this with the team i think was it last week that i i talked about this so um anyway this actually though it's a grave situation i admit um, Richard, still at the same time, it it verifies for me the the truthfulness of my worldview. It doesn't undercut it. It raises concerns, like for my family and and for the future and for the church and Christians that are being duped um, by the language and by the power moves and by the progressives and the wolves in our midst. But uh, it does it does serve to confirm my convictions because it fits perfectly into our understanding of a Christian view of reality. So um, for, that's my first thought. John? Yeah, I, I love that you let off with that, Greg, and I think it's a it's a great observation and also a struggle I think many listeners, Richard, are probably wrestling with right now. And I love, uh, so I love I love Romans 8, specifically Romans 8, 37, where we're told that we're, we're conquerors, right? We're more than conquerors through him yeah. who loved us. And that comes on the heel of Paul talking about uh, the trials and the suffering 
that have to take place before um, before our glory, ultimately, when we die. And I love, Greg, I love what you just said, because it's in the suffering, right, is uh, affirmation that our worldview is true. And if our worldview is true, the promises of God are true. So that's where I run. And I hold mm-hmm. really fast to the promises of God. And, and my identity, we talked about identity maybe last hour, uh, mm-hmm. uh, my identity of who I am in that. And even so, I'm able to, f- with this in mind, I'm able to face the trials and the tribulations knowing who God is, knowing my worldview is true, and knowing that the trials and the tribulations that are here aren't for naught. Mm-hmm. They're actually, the things that we're going through actually are doing something, right? Yes. These are but momentary light afflictions producing us yes. an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. There's yeah. something that, that is being produced in you and in me through these trials that otherwise would not be there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I think it's important for us to understand that. It's also important, Paul tells us, that the, the trials are, are uh, you know, they're producing patience in us. And that patience is producing proven character. And that proven character, mm-hmm. a hope. And then he says, mm-hmm. a hope that will not disappoint. Not disappoint. Yeah, and I, so I hold I hold on to these things in the midst of it, Richard. Sure. Great question. Yeah, the, these are these are great and they're very similar to what I was thinking here. Um so That's two a good thoughts thing. for you, two two <laughs> more, Richard, and my second one overlaps John's comment quite a bit. And the first one is um I do not view my responsibility to the world uh, to be one of persuading the world or even changing the world. And I, I want to qualify this because I don't want it to be misunderstood. Um, changing the world and persuading people ultimately are not in my control. It doesn't mean I can't have a salutary impact on the way people think and on the way the world is. But make But the ultimate end is not within my control. What is in my control is what I choose to do in response. So what I can do, say, with regards to the gospel and communicating that, I can communicate the truth as graciously and persuasively and as accurately as possible. And but no guarantee that the people are going to be persuaded. It's not my goal to persuade them. It's my goal to do what I just said. And it's God's responsibility to do the persuading. So if I'm a Jeremiah-type thing, speaking the truth uh, uh, accurately uh, and faithfully, and nobody listens, I can still look at my own behavior and say, you have succeeded in what you sought to do. You were faithful to the audience of one to do what was right. Whether or not it had a long-term impact on the individual or the culture is not under my control. That is not my responsibility. So part of the way I approach this, Richard, is I say, what can I do that is within my power to accomplish, to succeed in doing? And I see my role is this and God's role is that. My role is to be faithful. God's role is to make a difference, and that helps me there as a first principle. Make sense? Yes. It okay. Does. Uh, so, so and, and, if nobody listens to me, I'm not surprised, and it's not, it's not the end of the world because that wasn't my goal anyway. If what I am doing is being faithful to the Lord in the way I communicate and in what I communicate, then then I have accomplished my goal, and I have been successful, if you want to use that language, all right? The second thing is what John was getting at, okay? I have said multiple times in the last year or so that we are not limited to our four score and ten, okay? Uh, Many people, when they get to be my age, 71, they're looking over their shoulder because there's not much of their life left compared to what's past, and they haven't accomplish what they wanted to accomplish, so there's not enough life left to do that. And so it's deeply disappointing for them, okay? But for me, I'm not measuring this four score and ten. I am measuring, I'm thinking in, in a much broader sense. And so if it turns out that I'm laboring away being faithful in the way that I just described in the first point, I am storing, I, I'm making deposits, you know, 
It's just like you say, okay, I really worked hard this week, but I'm putting on all of my 401k so I can cash it in later. I'm not going to enjoy it now, but that's okay because I know I am going to cash it in later, something along that line. It's kind of maybe a weak parallel, but it gives you a sense. I know that I am going to cash all of this in later. I know that because I have a promise. I have a hope, as John said, that will not disappoint because God is the one who secures that. And so when I read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 16 through 18, what John just cited, that there is momentary light affliction, okay, that is producing for me. That is, note, the verb is really important, an eternal weight of glory. I'm making a deposit in the bank. And so what this period of time, it's like you, you got a work week, five days a week. Why? So you can enjoy the weekend. All right? So this is a work week for me. And fighting all these battles, this is just part of the work week. And the weekend isn't a weekend. The weekend is the rest of eternity. Yeah, it's a long weekend. <laughs> far, far, far beyond all comparison. So those two things, they help me. I don't know what's going to happen next year or next week, for goodness sake. It does look bleak from a human perspective, but I know the gates of hell will not prevail against Christ's church, and we have 2,000 years of history to demonstrate that's the case. Yeah, and and you're true that uh, it it really validates the Bible so much more, and and I think I'm about five years younger than you, but we grew up in a very cushy time, and to see it kind of going over a cliff is tough for us, but it's really validating the Bible more and more. I mean, right. you look at Paul's life, you're reading the Old Testament, and you say, oh, this will never happen. You yeah. know, it's happening now. Yeah. And, and so uh, it, it just makes it so much more uh, powerful mm-hmm. uh, to me. And, you know, at some, I think people are going to be woke the other way uh, as well. Like, hey, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. And then when it doesn't, to be there or to, hey, I remember this guy saying this, uh, uh, about you know you know Christian point of view that seems to make sense mm-hmm. um, that that really it, it, this is our moment mm-hmm. uh, you know because it is so crazy and to keep our head when everyone else is losing theirs uh, because we're we're grounded in the truth right uh, that's and, a great people, way to put it yeah uh, are, are hungry for that I mean deep down inside I, I think <laughs> I, I, I at least for me I, even though it stings sometimes. I, I want the truth, right. uh, and 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 if somebody can, even if it's truth against the church or what, whatever, or, or you know, let's let's discover it. I'm not going to silence you. I'm going to you know look it up. I'm going to reference. You know, I'm going to do the the legwork. Mm-hmm. But you know, uh, I I want the truth um, because I don't want to waste my time. Uh, so Richard, I think yeah, Richard, I just think you just touched on something. I'll make this my final remark to you, but. There is a sense in which that even though we've had a cushy life up till now, Americans in general, with regards to these issues, it is time to gird our loins. It is time to, as Paul put it, act like men. And I don't mean sexist. I mean rise to the occasion with strength, okay? To be strong, to be on the alert. These are all biblical exhortations, and this is the time to do that. And those who are, are Christians need to be willing to say, I'm going to stand in the gap and take whatever the wor- world is going to, to dish out to me, because this is temporary. It is just temporary, when eternity is like forever. <laughs> That's the definition of the word.